I'd like to start by introducing myself. My name is John Ferrara. I'm the CEO of Nimble, and today is a special day. I'm super excited to do this webinar with these two dear friends, and I call them dear friends because I know them emotionally. Uh, I've laughed with them. I've cried with them. I've hugged them, <laughs> and, uh, and I love them. Um, so let me start out with uh, Vivica. Uh, Vivica von Rosen is one of the people that really stands out on LinkedIn. She started early on to really champion how powerful that platform is to build your brand and grow your network. And when she got together with uh, Bernie Borges, who was independently mm -hmm. also a thought leader in social selling and, and using social media to, to build a brand and a network and to market your company, I just thought it was such a great idea. What they did is they gathered together some of the brightest minds into a company called Vingresso that really gathered many of the people I most respected in this industry. And if you're looking to grow better, smarter, faster by using technology, by using social, and by helping your team grow, you should call them. And that's why I called them. When I wanted to build a webinar to teach salespeople how to use content to drive sales conversations. And with that, Bernie, take us away. Thank you, John. I'm all choked up from that introduction. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I remember the first time that we saw each other and hugged. Uh, don't remember the crying part, but I'll take <laughs> word for it. Um, I want to echo your shout out for Michaela. We were saying that actually before we started the broadcast. So Michaela, thank you so much for all the behind the scenes work to really make this a uh, reality today. So let's let's get started. We've got a lot that we want to cover today. I'm excited about it. Um, what we're going to cover with everyone today is a, a mix of ideas and best practices and tips and tricks on how to use content to start sales conversations. And unless you sell stuff online through e-commerce, then basically all sales start yeah. with conversations, right? So on this webinar, as John said in the introduction, uh, Vivica, John, and I are gonna share proven strategies that can help you start more sales conversations using content. I'm gonna try to remember the fact that we've got a mix in audience in terms of company size and Salesforce size and all that. So Viv and John, please keep me honest on that in case <laughs> something that may not be relevant to uh, you know some portion of the, uh, the attendees today. So let's start with um, this, what we call the difference between marketing and sales content. And let's start with a, looking at content marketing. You know, content marketing has long been recognized as the ongoing publishing of content to build brand, to build awareness, to build demand, essentially lead generation. Fundamentally, content marketing is owned by the marketing department. And fundamentally, when a company does content marketing, it's one to many. In other words, it's the marketing team, even for those of you who are solopreneurs, when you've got that marketing hat on, right, then and you're putting out content under your brand, it's coming from your brand, your logo. That's fundamentally what content marketing is. It's building top of the funnel leads, but it's generally not really building bottom of the funnel or sales ready leads. So let's look at what we mean by content for sales. Essentially, content for sales is content that salespeople use to start conversations. The biggest difference between content for sales and content marketing is that, as I said a moment ago, content marketing is one to many, but content for sales is sharing content between a salesperson and a prospect. So it's one to one. And as you can see by some of the, uh, the highlights here on this image, it's, it's content that people, salespeople love to use because it actually helps them create more sales conversations. And again, it's it's one to one versus one to many. We'll get into some of these other aspects here about how content in a sales uh, scenario, sales activity maps against the buyer's journey and personas and all of that. But the main point I wanna emphasize is that it's one to one and salespeople in organizations where there's truly dedicated salespeople, you solopreneurs out there, you wear all the hats. Yeah. <laughs> Your finance, your accounting, you're the president, you take, take out the garbage and your sales and your marketing. But in the bigger companies, you've got dedicated sales, dedicated marketing, 
this content is content salespeople love to use. Yeah. Now, content marketing and content for sales is not an either or thing. It Content marketing is about building awareness, building credibility, building demand at some level, but content for sales is about enabling salespeople. And for, for those of you that are in a, a bigger company, maybe you're familiar with the, the phrase or the, the role in the company, sales enablement. You may have that in your company, you may not, but content for sales is about enabling salespeople to engage and connect with buyers one-to-one -one with specific content that the salesperson has selected and they select that content and they share it to influence the buyer's mindset, to build trust with an individual buyer, to build loyalty between that buyer, that prospect and the salesperson, and to hopefully create top of mind mindset so that that salesperson is top of mind when the buyer is ready. Mm -hmm. Viv, John, anything you wanna to add to that? Well, you know, Bernie, I, I really believe that if you are a business person, or a salesperson that you need to be concerned about sales content but also content to build your brand and to establish yourself as a trusted advisor and stay top of mind so the only thing i would want to point out is that for sales people it's not either or they should be right. sharing content on a daily basis i share content on an hourly basis on twitter <laughs> and various other channels at different times to inspire and educate others about the areas of promise of my products and services but also about my passions in life, because I think it shouldn't just be business information. You should expose a little bit of your heart and soul to connect with people. And in addition to that, in response or in engagement, I use sales content as a one-to-one -one thing. And in many cases, it's because they have bitten my general content to build my brand and then started to engage with me, in which case I use the sales content. What do you think? Yeah. I, I agree 100%. And not only that, and, and I know Bernie has spoken about this and will continue to speak about it because it's 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 a it's a soapbox for us at Vengresso. It is that alignment between marketing and sales, and and it's the conversations that marketing and sales need to have so that sales can actually have conversations with their salesperson. And and one thing I've noticed working with 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 companies is sometimes the marketing buyer persona and the sales buyer persona are different. And so there's a huge disconnect there. And of course, marketing isn't, our sales isn't going to use the marketing tool when it's it's the wrong part of the funnel. So I know, Bernie, you're going to talk a little bit more about that, but I just. Um, yeah, I, think, I, I think it's a great segue to uh, to the, the next slide that uh, we've planned for this discussion. There we go. So, <laughs> so on the slide, you know, we've got, look, it's one slide and we've got however many people are on this webinar and going to listen to the recording across different industries. So this is just a sampling of the kind of content marketing assets that you know any brand can produce, right? Everything you see on the left. On the right, there are a couple of differences. One is salespeople can use case studies in individually with prospective buyers. The same is true of thought leadership pieces, but the important thing is that they recognize the stage of the buying journey. So if they wanna get on the radar with uh, an executive or with a company that's at the early stage, then sharing thought leadership content is a way to do that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, something like an assessment tool or an ROI tool, is a really good way to capture the attention of a prospective buyer that's a little further along in that buying journey. Yeah. The difference is though, here's a big difference. In content for sales, what we advocate at Vengresso is that some of these assets be vaulted. Now, what do we mean by vaulted? Well, you know what a vault is, right? Meaning you, you keep some of it locked up and accessible to salespeople and not generally accessible in the public domain, meaning not on your website, not on your blog, not in your resources section. It's not shared on social media. It's behind some kind of an internal vault, if you will, that salespeople can use selectively in their sales activities. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that is a, that's a significant aspect of content for sales is providing salespeople, and again, for the, you smaller companies and solopreneurs, you can just do this yourself, 
keeping things off your website and keeping it somewhere where you can access it privately and use it very selectively. Yeah. I, I think one of the things you want to point out also is use a tool that gives you signals on the engagement of, um, of that uh, vaulted content as well. Yep. Okay. So Can, um, actually, John, explain what you mean a little bit more by that to, to me. <laughs> sure, sure. So, so if, so I have templates that I've developed in Nimble that have uh, attachments that are pre-attached to them and I could attach other things to it, but there's typical follow-up or typical engagement that I might do with editors, analysts, bloggers, influencers, third-party developers, investors, advisors, and prospects and customers of various types. I, I know that was a lot of people, but if you're thinking about that all you do is engage with prospects and customers, you're missing the boat on the constituency, the community, the, the um, sustainable garden you need to build around your business. And for each of those different constituents, you have to have different sets of, of emails with attachments that would go out. And I have those preset in Nimble. And then when I share them, nice. I get signals on the opens and clicks. Now, there's ah. a variety of tools that you could use to do that. In fact, there's a thing that uh, that I think that you guys use, and I just met the CEO, the VinMob, or what's it called? OneMob. OneMob, yeah. And so what OneMob started out with is a, a video sharing tool that you can create a quick video, because uh, if a picture tells a thousand words, a video tells a million, and that you can send them a, an enclosed video real quick off your phone, that is a follow-up, and for many salespeople, we stink at typing, so it's really great to be able to just uh, share a quick little follow-up words with them, and then they get that video, and you get signals on uh, how engaged they were, if they watched it, et cetera, but now they also do attachments as well, and you can see that as well. And so whatever you use, make sure that you use something that has preset templates and attachments with signals, and the only other thing that I would want to add with salespeople sharing content is the other day, a, uh, a friend of mine who's part of our nimble constituency, mm -hmm. Joel Comp, was, uh, was we were talking about a webinar that we're going to do together. And he mentioned that, uh, w that he's going to Ireland. So yeah. I shared with him that uh, I just went to Ireland and I essentially sent him some content that was one to one, that was relevant, authentic, that had nothing to do with business. But if you're a salesperson, if you're a business person, you need to think beyond business and build connections on the five F's of life, family, friend, food, fun, and fellowship, because that's the deep side of life that maintains connections. So as you start thinking about what you're going to share and how you're going to engage, make sure you take relationships beyond the business lobby. Yeah. Well said, John. Yeah. Uh, there's a hashtag in there, right? Five F's of life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. That's right. That's right. I'll get up my soapbox. <laughs> I want to talk about how to organize content by buyer persona. And again, you know, this is a webinar setting. We're going to have many different industries. So these are very general personas. So just to talk about each one in very general terms, an executive can really want to be progressive right, and want to understand how to improve the top line and bottom line in their business. So thought leadership content can, can be very effective with an executive. A manager, you know, sometimes in sales, we forget that when, manage, when we're selling to managers, their job can be on the line, depending on what we're selling them. So you need to provide proof of Proof of the fact that your stuff works, right? In order to really convince managers to continue to talk to you. The, the doer, they need to know how your stuff works because you know at some level their job is on the line or at least their, their performance reviews are on the line. And then the technical person, well, they also know how need to know how your stuff works, but they need to understand it at a really detailed level. So you need content that explains it at a different level so these two can be similar, but yet different. Yeah. So you need to be thinking about content that addresses all of these personas and what their needs are. You know, Anything Bernie, I, I think that's a perfect segue to talk about that, it, that people buy from people, but you just don't sell to one person at a company. And when I read this book called Strategic Selling, when I was struggling to be a sales rep at Banyan, which 
essentially inspired me to go build Goldmine, I found out that there's multiple buyer personas and one of them is the financial buyer. And ultimately they each have different needs that you need to address and any one of them can kill your sale. And so uh, if anybody is listening to this today and wants to know about more about buyer personas and how to manage a, a more larger strategic seller sale, I think strategic selling is still a, uh, a, a great book to go back and read. The classic. Yeah. 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 Bernie. Um, and I don't know if this is the right time for this, but there's a really good question. There's a lot of really good questions actually in the, in the question box. Um, but this one is how do you determine what content should be reserved behind the wall versus what you share in public? Um, and can you speak to that a little bit more or should we handle that in Q and A at the end? Well, you bring it up, so I'll, I'll address it now. And I don't think there's, a, there's one <laughs> black and white answer. Uh, I, the guidance that I would give you is I think uh, not providing tools like an assessment tool or an ROI tool in the public domain and keeping that to, you know, selectively using that with people that you think are really qualified to buy from you. I think that's one example of the kind of content that you, you might want to vault. But honestly, it's going to be case by case. You know, it's just you have to think through with all the personas that you're selling to what content you might want to just hold back. And if you're not sure, just begin to experiment with it and try it. But again, my guidance is something that's 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 a tool related where people have to engage with you and there's value, like true value in that piece of content. I would keep I would withhold that and vault that and use that selectively. And um, question for you then. Um... <laughs> which literally just left my, oh, no, no, I know what I was going to say. I was like in my head and then it went. Um, but that's, that's I mean, that is one thing because one of the things that you do at Vengresso is is help um, create these strategies and define the personas and and decide, create and decide what content goes where. So um, that's, I mean, I think that's a, a common practice that more marketing teams need to adopt. So it wasn't a question, it was a statement. Right. <laughs> And we, we look at we look at the emotion too. We don't just look at um, the you know the roles and functions of each persona. Um, <clears throat> so another good segue to the next point that we want to cover here, and that's considering the buyer's journey. So the buyer's journey here is defined in very very general terms. Yeah. Again, you know you need to define what your buyer's journey looks like within your industry, but in general terms, we're talking about the the prototypical awareness, interest, consideration, and action. And consider these statistics that are on the right-hand side, and you can read through them, but I'm going to call out one, and that's this one here, the 82% one. 82% of B2B buyers consume five to eight pieces of content from the winning vendor. So don't rely on the buyer consuming content that was supplied from your quote-unquote marketing department, whether that's you or, or a marketing right. company. Because if you know from this fact, this statistic here, that your buyer, the, the one who's going to select a vendor in a scenario, selling scenario, is going to consume five to eight pieces of content, then don't you want to influence that? Don't you want to be part of the supply exactly. of the content to the individuals that you're you're working with, that you're selling to? So just Always understand your journey, the buyer's journey, and then you know consider how you can influence them through content that essentially endears them to you because you're being valuable to them. And if you recognize this piece here, this point here, five to eight pieces of content are, are consumed by the B2B buyer from the winning vendor, then okay. that alone should, should be motivation to be feeding content and engaging with content to uh, the people that you're selling to. And, and Bernie, I want to point out, uh, go back to that, that slide for a second, that you shouldn't just be thinking about this content during the sales process with a prospect, because if you waited until that moment to establish yourself as a trusted advisor, to be part of their journey, so that when they need your products and services, they pick up the phone and they call you and they drag their friends with them, then you're really failing in your ability to stand out from the crowd. And so if you Google McKenzie customer journey, you'll see a 25 page PDF and in there is a diagram of the new customer journey, which is more like a pretzel than a funnel. And your job as a business person, whether you're in sales or marketing or the owner, is essentially to stand out, to be top of mind. Because Mae West said, out of sight is out of mind, out of mind is out of money, honey. 
And for you to stay top of mind, you can't wait till they're making the buying decision or they're con making their consideration set. You need to right. stab yourself as a trusted advisor way before that. And that's all through this content journey that we're talking about. And then once they get engaged in the sales process, then you can start using this vaulted stuff to go one to one. Yeah, Michaela, can you send out a poll and ask if anybody on this webinar knows who Mae West is? <laughs> oh, oh, dude. That's the best That's the best one, so you know, I love that. <laughs> she, she's the pistol in your pocket, lady, in case you were wondering. <laughs> you know, Mae West, besides being an incredible actress, was an incredible entrepreneur who I think uh, was an inspiration to uh, some of the amazing uh, women we have around us today, like Viv, and um, and so you should definitely Google Mae West. She's a hoot uh, in many ways. And also, cool. I look just like her. <laughs> so, John, at Ingresso, what you just described at Ingresso, we call that inserting yourself into the buyer's journey. Yeah. And you insert yourself by sharing content that is so relevant that it's discoverable by your buyer. And you do yes. that through a variety of social and digital engagements so that you are discoverable, findable, right? And you insert yourself into the buyer's journey in a relevant way so that you actually get invited into some conversation. So let's and, keep and moving. I'm gonna, and I'm going to demonstrate that uh, a little bit later because okay. I think it's an important point to reiterate. Cool. All right. So, um, I want to give just a few examples of content for sales in action. In this scenario, it's a LinkedIn message. Uh, you can see it's me. It's it's I'm sharing content with a real person here. This is a screenshot of an actual share that I did with a, a lady named Nora. And you can see she gave me a response at the bottom. And it's just you know a way for me to stay on her radar, right? By sharing a piece of content. Now in this example, it's not vaulted content, but it doesn't matter. She didn't know about it until I sent it to her. That's the main point is I'm staying on her radar by sharing it with her. In this example, did I skip a slide? No. In this example, this is actually an example of a one mob video. So John, you mentioned that a moment ago. So this is a personalized video. You can see this is my, my mug shot. So if you were to click on this, we're not gonna play it. It opens up and plays a video that I recorded and I'm calling attention to uh, a case study that we published. You can see the button here. Uh, get the SAP case study. So it's a case study that we published on SAP's social selling strategy. And then below this, which you can't see on the slide, but on the video landing page below this are thumbnail images of each podcast. And there's a case study there. So it's just another way for me to send content to anyone. And from a tracking standpoint, if I send it to you and you click on it, I know you clicked on it. And then individually, each of these thumbnail images, I would know from a tracking standpoint, which ones you clicked on. And I also know how much time you spent on them as well, because that's part of the technology. So just another example of content for sales in action, but also how to track and measure how people are using it. Speaking of, of measuring, uh, there's a, a number of different ways that you can measure the contribution that content is making to sales. These are just a few simple examples. This first one here, I actually like a lot. I mentioned a moment ago that, that statistic, which by the way is from Forrester, and that is that 82% of B2B buyers consume five to eight pieces of content from the winning vendor, but that's a general statistic. What's it like in your business? So measure how many pieces of content are being consumed by your customers. And you can use tools and technologies like marketing automation, for example, like Nimble, et cetera, but you can also ask your customers too, you know, in, in, in relationships, just ask them. So, you know, you looked at us, you looked at others, you went with us, fantastic, we're thrilled. Do you remember, you know, what, which content you looked at? What, what content was influential? You'll learn a ton just by asking those questions. And also analyze and study which pieces of content were consumed the most by new customers. And then don't forget storytelling. Don't forget just, right. you know, what you hear from your peers, whether they're, they're inside your company or outside your company. But, of course, inside your company, if you're, in, you're one of the people who have or in a bigger company and you have a sales team, what, what's the salespeople, what are they saying? What are they asking for? What are they telling you really, really works well? And, and then just you know, consider all of that in your planning for more content for sales. Yeah. And then in terms of the elements of content for sales, admittedly, this is very high level. So just 
from a, a webinar delivery standpoint, you know, didn't want to get too granular, too in the weeds, but you need to begin with a strategy. And a big part of that strategy is defining your buyer personas, their journey, what their pain points are, what their emotions are. We actually map them out with an avatar, with an image, a picture of each buyer persona. So we have a visual um, understanding of what that buyer can actually look like age-wise, demographics, et cetera, and, and really understand them as deeply as you can. And then as you're producing content, then you have a clear understanding of who you're producing that content for. But I also want to point out that in the word production, there's also the word, in, in, the, in the context of content, there's also curation. So you don't have to originally produce all the content. You can curate content. Now, in this context, boy, that's a tongue twister. Um, <laughs> it, it, curation's a fancy word. We're talking about if, if you come across an article or you're, you're using a tool or technology to actually identify third-party authoritative articles, and then you share those, that's some of the best content you can share with your prospective buyers because it's not from you. It's not your company. It's from Harvard Business Review or whatever, some third-party authoritative source of, of information, and you're sharing that. So you don't have to think in terms of always producing original content. You can also be curating content. In fact, you should be curating content because, again, it's third-party authoritative and can help you educate and inspire your, your buyer. Bernie, then, I want to dig into this for just a second, because I think this is a critical point. So anybody listening, heads up. Um, <laughs> I, really, I really believe that most people have forgotten more about their products and services than their customers, prospects, or their influencers will ever know in their lifetime. Yeah. And all they have to do is give their knowledge away. But most salespeople don't like to write. And so uh, if you're a, a passionate business person, you're consuming net new information on a daily basis. In the morning with your coffee, you're, you're digging through things and you see things that inspire and educate you. It's simple, just share it. So all you need to do is load something like Buffer in your browser, that's buffer.com. And whenever you see a piece of content, you essentially queue it up and don't just put it in one place, put it into multiple places. And ideally, you're sharing content, not just on your corporate identity, like nimble.com, but also on your personal identity and across multiple different people within your organization. Because I think that if you empower your customer facing business team members to build their brand, it'll build the company brand and also humanize it. So share that content, but most importantly, when you share the content, hashtag it appropriately with Nimble, right. it's typically pound sales, social, and marketing, and attribute the person's name because that person is an influencer in and around the areas of promise your products, and you want to build a relationship with the influencer and their community, and then you need to listen and engage. And when you engage, you don't start selling. You start listening and learning for a way to add value. And if you rinse and repeat what I just said, You'll build a brand and a network so big, you'll need a really good tool to manage it. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up hashtags too, because we'll um, we'll be talking that uh, about um, hashtags in just a minute, and and the strength of them now, even on LinkedIn, <clears throat> where they didn't they, they weren't very effective for a while. So um, hashtags, mentioning people, having sharing hubs where you can promote each other's content, it all builds that top of mind awareness and and that subject matter expertise positioning that help you become the trusted advisor. Because to Bernie's point earlier, you know, with the buyer's journey, we want the, the whole and goal is to have conversations you know from 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 every level of the buyer's journey from discovery to decision you know we we need to make sure that that we are the the resource that people are looking at not our competitors amen exactly well said so <clears throat> moving moving along this continuum here then you've got to distribute your content so lots of ways to distribute it and there's some very obvious ones but I will also just want to point out that again you can use tools and technologies you know the the buffers the nimbles the 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 employee advocacy tools the gaggle amps the everyone socials where you can distribute content to people inside your company so it's really easy for them in turn to distribute it out to their network to the people that they're engaging with mm -hmm. so you've got to don't don't overlook distribution just because you develop your strategy and you produce the content and you curate content, you've got to also have a plan for distribution of that content. And then as we discussed earlier, 
you want to analyze what's working, what's not working, and then double down on what's working and stop doing or do less of what's not working. Did I say that right? Double down on what is working. I don't know if I said working, that. Working, yes. <laughs> do less is what's not. Yeah, work it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, upset on that. I think we we got the point across on that. All right. So. But I want to I want to I wanna belabor one last point. I think that many salespeople and other business executives, business people don't do a really good job of building their brand and nurturing their network. And they say it takes too much time or it's too much trouble. And most companies don't do a really effective job of building right. up content and enabling the people to share. And even the ones that do build content, the sales reps don't effectively share it and they don't listen and they don't engage. And I think this is one of the biggest struggles. You could bring somebody to the lake, but you can't get them to jump in the water. And so here's a reason why you should do this. Your network is your net worth. Your personal brand plus your professional network will help you achieve your dreams in life. And nobody's going to build it but you. And ultimately, you're not going to work where you work in one to five years. The average is three for most people. Yep. And so what you should do is you should build your brand and grow your golden Rolodex every single day, which means you should be doing this curation of the content and sharing the content and engaging on a regular basis. And I'm going to give you one name, Vala Ashfar. Vala was a technical support rep for a West for a Boston technology company when I first met him uh, not too long ago. And now he's the head of digital for Salesforce. And he not only used digital to build his brand, but it built the company brand, got the company sold, and then established him as a thought leader around the world. And he doesn't share content about business for the most part. He shares it about how other humans can become better, stronger, faster, in, as a human being, and that resonates with people. So remember, it's not all about business and life, it's around humanity and connecting. Well said, awesome. amen. <laughs> Cool. So um, before I get into LinkedIn native video, there's there's two questions that I really liked here, and I'm going to actually use native video to answer them. The first one was how the customer journey has changed for B2B buyers versus consumers. And I think consumers, um, since the you know onset of the internet, have always been great researchers. Um, you know, you're going to go buy a car, you're going to research the car online. You're going to buy a house you're going to go to MLS and, and, and talk to people and, and get a referral. But consumers are great researchers. Um, B2B companies have relied in the past on consultants and on traditional marketing to, to help them uh, make their decisions. Now, with the modern buyer's journey, the B2B buyer looks a lot more like the consumer because the content is there and things like LinkedIn, which obviously my hash, my, my, my handles at LinkedIn expert. I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. Um, obviously LinkedIn allows the B2B buyer or all 6.7 of them to, to research the seller as well. And that's why, and that's a whole, that's a whole other conversation that, that we can have, but that's why it is so important um, to have a strong brand when you're engaging, which takes me to the next uh, question, which was how can I, I'm B2B, how can I get a new client in a day? Well, on the one hand, I'm gonna say, good luck with that. On the other hand, I'm gonna say, you know what though, if you start, if you've got a strong brand and you're positioning yourself as an expert and you're using tools like LinkedIn native video um, and you're, you're, you're creating conversations you actually could potentially sell a, a product to a B2B buyer in a day. Now, your lead times, especially if it's, if it's a high dollar, your lead times are gonna be longer. You're gonna have more people who are in the buying process. And so another thing that you're gonna have to do is combine that content marketing and content for sales and use your content to land and expand. So you're gonna use your content to find one, you know, one advocate within that company and once you've got that one advocate within that company who may or may not be the decision maker, then you expand within that company. And I, again, believe that LinkedIn is a great way to do it, not the only way to do it, um, but you can expand and, and actually have that advocate begin to share your content. And 
back to one mob, um, a great example is uh, Mario Martinez, who's, who's, who's our CEO. He had a one mob and because he could track the uh, video engagement, he saw that video being shared amongst all the leadership um, within, within one of the companies that we ended up you know, closing. So we could actually track where our one advocate who, you know, he connected to on LinkedIn, I think through an update, a, a conversation within an update, um, how that advocate for us took that video that he had and shared it amongst the leadership who made the buying decision. So um, yeah, can you do it in one day? It's a little hard to do it in one day, but the more, the more of the buyers that you can get in front of, the more top of mind awareness that you can build, bam, the faster your close time your, and the shorter your lead time is going to be. So to that point, LinkedIn made a video. <laughs> Go ahead to the next slide if you would, Bernie. Yeah, quick Link point. You, know, you, can yeah. be building, you can be building awareness and credibility over the span of a year or two and mm -hmm. then in a, a conversation in one day, right. close some business. But you've been building your reputation over the last one or two or more years. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, and yeah, to that point. So uh, one of the things I love about LinkedIn native video, which is a, to me, a great combination of content marketing and content for sales content is um, it, it, it's, it's, well, first of all, it's video that's native to LinkedIn. So it's not, it's when you're sharing an update on LinkedIn, you're not, you're not sharing a link to YouTube you're actually creating unique content that you're uploading, which means it's probably, probably not going to be one of those, um, you know, one of those beautifully crafted multi-million dollar corporate type videos uh, that that's definitely aligned more with the with the content marketing you know i i immediately this is b2c business to consumer but i immediately think of the um the squatty potty and the the unicorn who poops rainbows um you know that's that is such a beautifully crafted video and it absolutely went viral and you would share the link to that but that's what not not what native video is native video is literally creating a video maybe the very same one that you end up uploading to uh, to, to one mob if you're using one mob or sharing um, once you've got it you can share the link to it through nimble but it's it's video that you upload and the reason I love native video is the visibility it gets um, about 10 to a hundred times more visible than a than than a regular update on LinkedIn now I can and have spoken about LinkedIn native video for over an hour so I'm gonna do a really high level view here of, um, of what works and then I can take questions uh, as well. And, and we've got resources of course on, on native video in our, um, in our, in our, on our website too. So once you upload your native video, again, it's in the update section, it's on your homepage where you would just share a post or an update. Once you upload your video, you do have 1200 characters there to describe what that video is and it's public it goes on to the main timeline so yeah you can use hashtags and and make that video more findable through the hashtag you can at mention relevant people and and then you can share it and and hopefully it goes viral and what i've noticed with my with the videos that i share is at first it's all my network that's seeing it but eventually 90% of the people seeing that particular video and engaging on that video are outside of my network. They're second and third level connections. So um, there's there's a lot of opportunity there to build that top of mind awareness and to land and expand into the companies you want. And the other cool thing is the analytics are pretty good. So you can see on the screen, um, this particular video got 31,000 views and you can't really see because it's it's hidden by the number there. But the, the companies that most viewed LinkedIn, the first First one was actually or the most viewed this video the first company was actually LinkedIn itself so yay um, the second was Oracle um, and then I can't and then there's another one and then there's ADP and then USAA so these are all our target markets I can also look to see the titles and make sure I'm I'm sharing video that attracts the right titles and video that attracts the right viewers from the right you know countries or cities that that my buyer persona is aligned with I can see how many views I've got. And views are great, but the number I like a lot more are the likes and the comments. And specifically the comments because that's where 
you start to have your conversations. That's where it moves from being a piece of content marketing to a content for sales piece because from there I can have a conversation with someone within the update itself or I can take it and, and have a private conversation with someone. So there's a lot of power. And Bernie, if you just go ahead and pull up that first link. Sure. I will, uh, I'll just show kind of a, a, a native video in action and give you all some more ninja tricks. So here's one I did about, what, two weeks ago. Um, you can see I'm using <clears throat> the hashtags here. You can see where I've at mentioned my team members so they can help to amplify it for me. Um, I'm, this is a demonstration video, so demonstration videos, um, opinion videos, controversial opinion pin, uh, videos tend to get a lot of, um, a, a lot of activity as our friend Jim Keenan does. Um, you know, product demo, but you're not going to get as many views um, and as much engagement, but it's definitely, there's a place for that. Uh, uploading client testimonials that you might already have on YouTube, but uploading them here. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. And um, native video can either be crafted on your desktop and uploaded or right from your phone. And Viv, it really just question. depends on what you're most comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, how long should the videos be? Yeah, so great question. Um, so they can be between three seconds and 10 minutes. And it really depends on the content. I've I've sat through and watched a 10 minute video that was an interview. I've also clicked off of something in 30 seconds. Generally, the data shows, and unfortunately, the analytics on LinkedIn are not as good as say YouTube, where you can see where <laughs> you're losing people. Um, but generally, in the 30 to 90 second, unless you are in fact giving a tutorial or doing an interview, and then they can go a little bit longer. Um, and it really is, it's about, it's about the content that your buyers are interested in. So to answer, um, and I'm going to answer all of these questions. So what, what should the video be? What kind of topic? Well, if you're thinking from the salesperson's point of view, one of the ninja tricks is what question do I get asked all the time other than how much this is, is this going to cost me? So think about it. Like what question do you get asked about your product or service all the time? So answer that question in a video, right? So that's that's one thing that you can do. Or um, what is your defining factor? What's your USP? What makes you different from everybody else out there? Maybe you can use the video to talk about that. And I, you know, not everyone. There was a question about customer service earlier, so I'll I'll tie that in. If customers are asking you questions, you can actually use the video to answer that question. You can actually bring up the customer and tag them. And I'll do that once in a while. Someone will ask me, like, what's a hashtag community? Hey, John, thanks so much for asking me about what a hashtag community is. They're new on LinkedIn and they're awesome. Here, let me give you a quick video testimonial. Or let me give you a quick video a tutorial. And um, I'm going to share this. It's such a great question. I'm going to share it uh, publicly, too. And so I'll do the video. I'll do the training. And then what I'll do is I'll, at the very, if you'll scroll back up, uh, Bernie, at the very top of your um, your your update, once you've posted it, you'll see three dots, and you can click on those three dots, and you can save that link or copy that link, and then you can take that link and then send it to the original person who you actually created the video for. You can save it so that you can find it again because these things are updates. So a little bit like Twitter, they fall off the wall and you'll never find them again. So you might want to save your, your links. And you can also use them as a resource in your one mob, in your nimble messages that you're sending out. Say, hey, you know, that's a question I get asked all the time. Um, so I, I did this video. Feel free to watch it. And so it's a, it becomes a great content marketing to content for sales piece that you can use and replicate. And by the way, when people click through and go back to your page and comment on it, it brings it back up to the top again. And so that helps to amplify it as well. So again, with the win-win situation. Yes, we have lots of resources on native video on our website. I'll get you some of those. Um, 
In fact, I think I've got a point drive link, which I will uh, I will get to you by the end of the presentation as well. But um, it's 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 an incredibly incredibly powerful tool. It's um, it's relatively easy once you are comfortable with the camera, and that's and, that's that's the big thing there, right? And, and being comfortable with the camera, I, I want to point out something, Viv, is that um, I've done studies over the years and perfect things don't pull as well as imperfect that's things. That's right. Because like, human beings love imperfection and they they uh, they suspect perfectness. And so don't think that your videos have to be perfect. Some of my best uh, clicked videos are ones where I simply whipped out my phone, I'm at a conference like Social Media Marketing World and I'm demonstrating some new feature in our nimble mobile thing to another friend and slash influencer and then i just share that video yeah and it gets incredible pull so uh don't think that you have to have perfect videos that's exactly right that's exactly right and one of the things um so i just a lot of you were asking like where can i find more information about this um i've got a point drive you just have to sign into linkedin in first to access it, but um, you can you can click through to there. I've got a video training. It's a little bit old, but you, you'll get most of most of the good tips out of it. Um, I've got some uh, blog posts in there and some other information too. So um, that is definitely one thing to one thing to to click through in the uh, in the chat box. There's another great question. I know I can keep talking, so y'all can just shut me up when it's time. Um, <laughs> uh, the hashtag. So that actual video is about hashtag communities, which are brand new on LinkedIn. You can go back into old posts and add hashtags where you didn't have hashtags before. Um, but the, the 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 current and it'll show up in a regular hashtag search in the search bar at the top. Um, but uh, the um, the the, mo the more current content with the current hashtags are likely are more likely to show up in the hashtag communities and you know what we'll put a link to that actual video if you're interested in hashtag communities because again we're kind of limited on time here and I can talk forever about LinkedIn uh, you can watch that video on communities and um uh, it, it'll give you almost everything you need to know <laughs> so so Viv and Bernie, what I'd love to do is I'd love to close out with a couple real live desktop examples of engagement after you've gotten people to click on your things and to engage with your video and then share our, our offer with the audience before we close out. So if you can pass over the control, I will go ahead and, uh, and share my desktop. Okay. Perfect. I think I covered all these questions too. I hope I did. <laughs> We will answer all the questions and we will send, answer, them, yes. <laughs> send them out to y'all. You know what the plural of y'all is? Y'all, all y'alls. All y'all. All y'all. <laughs> <y'all>. My mother's <laughs> Southern. I know all about all y'all. <laughs> okay. So, so we were talking about sharing native video. And I think one of the most important things you can do is if you are going to share content is to listen and engage. And so here we are in this uh, post and you've got all these different likes and all these different comments. What do you do with them? How do you then manage these relationships? And I love to nimble people. I love to fish them out of these conversations and then start a conversation to bring a digital relationship into a physical, into an actual one-to-one -one conversation and ideally turn that into a face-to-face uh, -face. because I think that the more digital we get, the more human that we need to be. And so what I do is I pull these people out in the, I have a, br a browser plugin with this app I use called Nimble. And what it does is it automatically brings up records that exist in my network, which is built automatically from your contacts in Office 365, Gmail, G Suite, iCloud, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and over hundred SaaS business apps. And then lets me use them anywhere as I work with them, because I think you need context and insights in order to engage effectively and then the most important thing that I can share is you need to take action. Where I may comment or engage with Eleanor here, or I may decide to engage with her on some other channel that's maybe more right. appropriate, which brings me to sharing content to build your brand in your network. There was a post that was done by this gal, Tiffany Bova, who basically said that yeah. CRM isn't about command and control, it's about empowering customer-facing business team members. And some somebody basically said BS, it, uh, it, it is about uh, command and control and when will sales managers lose their grip and isn't this what John Ferrara has been teaching and building with Nimble? 
And so what happens is that Nimble automatically logs every interaction that my uh, that anybody does with me, my brand, or my team, and then enriches them with people and company and surfaces them to me for engagement. So I was able to take this person rain reports and turn it into a living and breathing record that I then commented on this tweet and then engage with them, which turned into a LinkedIn conversation. And that's the way relationships happen. They're messy. They start in one channel and then shift from another to another. So they might start in uh, Twitter, shift to email, shift to LinkedIn, and then shift to our calendar appointment. And if you're doing it right, it then shifts to one-to-one -to -one connections. And I ended up finding out that this person runs CRM and data at Disney and that he lives in my town and our daughters go to the same school. So I invited him for a face-to-face -face breakfast and that turned into a long-term relationship. And this is the way that basically social works is that it starts in one channel and it shifts to another. And what you want to do is you want to pull it to the softer places of life like Instagram and Facebook. Here's a guy named Todd Nelms, who was chief of staff of the person that runs Microsoft Global Partners. And I wasn't able to connect with him on an ongoing basis from a business email perspective, but we're fast friends in, um, in Instagram, which basically maintained the relationship to the point where we then reconnected on a business level. And so when you're thinking about connecting in business, think about the personal side of it and connect across all those different places. Um, before we close out, are there any questions, Viv, that you wanted to answer or address that's outstanding, that's just burning? Um, I think I've been I've I've been typing in the answers into uh, <laughs> into the question box, and and some of you were asking for the um, uh, LinkedIn video resources. I've also popped them into chat, so we should be able to use them in both places. But but to your point, John, you know I was talking about engaging within uh, with within LinkedIn. As soon as you can get to that one on one conversation. And using Nimble is such, I mean, we love, love, love Nimble. Using Nimble to do that is, is one of the best things that you can do, right? And now Nimble has tools that help you find um, email addresses and, and or you can maybe private message someone. Yeah, I mean, that one-on-one -on -one conversation is really what you're trying to get to. So business to business, business to consumer, who cares? It's human to human, as our friend Brian Kramer says, and it's all about having that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, so, Did you want to tell them about the special from Vern Gresso? Okay, I'd be happy to. I know we're like one minute over. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier, like all of this is great and content is awesome. And the problem is when you start sharing content and you start engaging and creating visibility, people will research you. And if your LinkedIn profile sucks, um, it's going to cost you business. So all of the best content in the world and the best sharing in the world, if people are researching you and your your profile looks awful, um, guess what? It might actually cost you credibility and they might not uh, take it to the next step. So one of the things that we do with all of our clients before we ever get into content marketing strategies and content for sales strategies and social selling strategies and digital transformation strategies are make sure that they've got a strong profile and a strong personal brand. And we want to make sure that you do too. So if you go to linkedprofiles.info and we'll pop that link into the chat box as well. Um, and you can check out our different uh, profile options. And then I recommend either the gold or the platinum we're going to give you 20% off if you use the promo code NIMBLE. So um, I will pop that in for Michaela, actually, if you can grab that info and pop it into the, uh, into the chat box, that would be great. But we want to make sure that your profile looks as good as possible. Now, if, it, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, just know that we've got a program on LinkedIn profile optimization that should be launched in the next four or five weeks. Um, so we're actually replacing our silver offer with that if you're a do-it-yourselfer, and it'll be cheaper. Um, and if you're a real do-it-yourselfer, the other thing that I will do is put a link to our ebook, which will help to get you started. Um, and then finally, if you want uh, something in between, um, my latest book, 101 Ways to Rock Your Personal Brand, is 
also about personal branding. So we've got a lot of different options and resources for you from free to, uh, you know, 1400 bucks. <laughs> Thank you, Viv. And if, uh, if you're not already using Nimble, uh, you really should, because I think that yeah. you, <clears throat> everybody has a, a network and a brand and they need to nurture that network and connect with the people and pull them out of the digital and put them into a, their golden Rolodex. That's basically your contact platform. And Nimble is perfect for that. And even if you're using another CRM, it works great with any CRM. And you can, uh, if you sign up for Nimble, it's free for the first two weeks uh, at nimble.com. You can get 40% off your first three months uh, using the code John40. And with that, Bernie and Viv, I think we're going to have to do another one of these because I think, I think so. that there's <laughs> just so much amazing information to share with others that's uh, that in this deep and wide river of knowledge that is in this collected room. And I just want to thank you both for your friendship uh, because ultimately um, our relationship has moved beyond the business lobby yeah. and I just I cherish you both. And I want to thank you for getting up on the soapbox and inspiring and educating our <laughs> communities today. Like question. Thank you. Thank you, Michaela. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody. With that, good luck and good selling. Um, and again, the recording will be sent out to all of you. Thank you so much.